Hello everybody, it's Lisa. Today is Tuesday. Just got back from the VA with the coffee trailer uh, to serve the vets. Um, now I am making some steak and I am going to be going outside and filling up my garden boxes with some manure and dirt from my old chicken house. But today's video is about a couple things. We have a micro homestead. So we bought a house four years ago in um, an area outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee. We moved here from Virginia Beach and we have uh, an acre and a half. And so when we lived in Virginia Beach, we lived in a condo about five miles from the beach and I do miss the beach. I miss the boardwalk. I miss just relaxing at the beach on a Saturday. I miss walking the boardwalk, but we traded that lifestyle for a mini homestead experience in Tennessee right after COVID, which I'm glad we did, but I have been super busy for the last four years building up this backyard. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the things I've done. Hold on. So one of the projects besides our first chicken house was building this greenhouse out of recycled windows. So what I did was each window I got at an antique store. I think it was like a antique mall where they have the different booths. And I think they were like $5 each. So um, I'm 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I don't know, maybe less than $100 on my windows. And I laid them out in my driveway and try to put them in a square I wanted like 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 and then I filled it in with wood so I had these walls and then I cemented a 4 by 4 in each post and then attached the whole wall to it um, it was a little tricky because I had no plans I had no blueprints and so I had to fill in like this area as a gap but I learned from the first chicken house because the roof, that well, it was more. It wasn't the house; it was the coop, uh, wasn't steep enough to drain the water. So I said, for sure, we have to do a steep roof. So we built that, and then the summer we built these boxes out of cedar. The thicker cedar we got from a guy up in Signal Mountain that has a mill, and then the thinner, these ones. I got at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're basically cedar fence strips, and I put those together. So I have to clean those beds out, fill them up with dirt, and get them ready for the spring. Um, we just tore down, my son did, tore down this. There was a chicken house and coop there, like an 8 by 8 So he took that down, and we had built a new one back there. Um, over here... I have since built a couple different garden beds. These metal ones are filled with my lavender because we have the coffee trailer. We make our own lavender syrup. So I literally have like 41 lavender plants. So those metal boxes I got from Epic Gardening. They're really cool. Here's the other side of the greenhouse. I'll have to show you. There's Oakley. Say hi. Hi, Oakley. And she's our Bernadoodle. She is a cutie. She's like eight months old. So I'm going to come over here. Excuse my yard. We have lots of work to do because we've been working on finishing this chicken house. So we just finished this chicken house and it took us months. Not because. We didn't work. We well, we didn't work on it all the time, because we have the coffee business and that keeps us busy. But we just finished this, and we did not have any design. We just basically made it up in our heads. <laughs> we have 18 chickens, and right now they're not really laying. I don't know why, but only like two are laying. So I'm making them my own homemade feed, and I'm cooking them some beans. I heard beans, like having good protein, uh, is good for them to lay eggs. So today's project, this is where the old chicken house, I mean coop was, so got a lot of good dirt, manure, 
uh, really fertilized, so I'm going to put those in the garden boxes. And so, let's see, we have some elderberry bushes that are growing, but they haven't given us anything yet. And you have to excuse underneath my deck. We had rabbits and we got rid of them. We got to get all that cleaned out this winter. But here's the other side of my greenhouse. I love this greenhouse. I didn't get to use it this year because we didn't get it finished until like May. But okay, I got to show you. This is cool. This door is made from a single bed frame. I think that's cool. <laughs> And then, I put turf in here, and then I got these at Home Depot, they're on a dollar each. So, I got this little chandelier at a craft fair, but I have to clean all this out, and I want to put on this side more shelving to put my starters, so that has to be cleaned out. There's always something to do. And then somebody gave me that antique bed. I, sw I gave them a bag of coffee and they gave me that bed. <laughs> so I want to put that in the corner of my yard somewhere. Put wood all around it and close it. Fill it up with dirt and plant a bunch of wildflowers. So that'll be... I'll probably do that this, this winter. Because <laughs> i got to get all this stuff caught up. <clears throat> But in my boxes, I grew tomatoes. There's, there's a few things in there left. I had, this was all full of zinnias. That was beautiful. This was herbs. I used them a lot in drinks. I made lavender basil, which was amazing. Blueberries. And like I said, 41 plants, lavender plants. Here's more of my lavender. So this all will be harvest June 3rd. Yeah, so that's our old chicken house. We, my son just tore down. We have to burn all that. We had bees, but they, we were not successful with bees. I don't know why. We tried two years in a row. And right when it was going to be time for harvesting honey, the bees flew away or died or something. Which was a bummer, so my husband was a little discouraged, so he's like, no bees this year. So, um, so this video is basically sharing with you some things that we have done on an acre and a half. If you have a quarter of an acre, a half an acre, you could make the cutest little backyard with gardens and rock gardens and metal boxes filled with plants and flowers. You can grow anything in a container. Our soil is terrible, so we have to grow everything in a container. I have some peonies that I absolutely love, and they did not do good this year. So I'm going to dig them up and put them in um, boxes. So, anywho, I heard of this guy today, and I'm going to download one of his audio books. I think his name is Erwin Raphael something with an M. Erwin Raphael. I'll have to get back to you about his full name, but he had this really cool book, and it's all about mindset. So, I know one thing that I've learned in my 60 years of living is everything begins in the mind. The battle is in the mind. So when you get this taken care of, you can accomplish anything. It doesn't matter how old you are, how old you are, how young you are. Oh. Uh, what kind of culture you live in, what your financial status is, your mindset is everything. Like the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. So let me encourage you today to not only believe the best, but speak the best, speak life, speak life because your words are powerful. And I read this uh, quote today, if your words are powerful, how much more is prayer? Because you're praying to the God of the universe, the God of all creation. And he created things with his voice. Everything came into existence by his word and his intent. And so I don't believe in this manifestation stuff, but I do believe in the power of your words. And so, and the power of your actions. 
You can have all the words you want, but if you don't have actions backing up, then it's nothing. But anyways, let me encourage you today. Speak life and put action behind those words. So, tomorrow I'm going to make something really good. And I'm going to teach you something really good tomorrow. I'm going to teach you something really good. Okay. Blessings.